Welcome to this week's episode of The Difference of 13. Uh, my name is Chris. I'm here with my beautiful co-host. Terry. And if you're just listening to us on the podcast, you really need to go check out the YouTube channel <laughs> and see just how beautiful she is. Yeah, okay. She, you actually just broke our other lens. This is a new lens we're oh, okay. to put on. Did you know that? No, didn't oh, know it. Yeah. Your beauty just All the wrinkles shattered. was too much for the camera to take in. I would respectfully disagree with that. But, <laughs> okay. Um, well played. Well played. <laughs> we're excited to have you with us today. Uh, wherever you're going to, hopefully we can add a little bit of value and uh, hopefully a little bit of entertainment at our expense. Um, today we're going to be talking about a topic that actually we had a pretty popular uh, Instagram and Facebook post about this. Foam um, oh, rolling. Yeah. About how bad of a I am at kicking a foam roll in, in the right direction <laughs> that was pretty amusing yeah I actually, I actually hit Leslie with it I was oh, trying no. to aim about 10 feet left and <laughs> well, I don't play soccer but uh, we're going to be talking a lot about um, is it okay if it hurts are you using it the right way yeah, they're starting to become pretty mainstream pretty much in mm -hmm. all gyms they're you know major uh, fitness facilities that you'll go to when you can find them at Target they're pretty mainstream you know it's pretty mainstream right. but I, I think there's so many people are using them wrong <laughs> And it's surprise, surprise, uh, surprise. It's frustrating. <laughs> it's also comical. Um, so be sure to listen through the episode today so that we, we are not laughing at you. You are laughing at the other people. Right. Um, You'll learn the right way to do it. Exactly. But before we get into that, please, five stars, yes. uh, wherever, whatever you're listening to us on right now, stop for a second. If you're, if you're driving, pull over. <laughs> Um, do not rate and drive. I'm not no, sure if that's no, no. against the law. I know I'm pretty sure it is. is but, yeah. Um, but just tell them you're rating us if they pull you over, and I'm sure they'll let you go. Totally. Um, <laughs> thumbs up on YouTube <laughs> if you're watching us here. Um, we're really excited to have you with us and really appreciate you taking the time out of your day. But So let's get into foam, foam rolling. rolling. So what? how were you taught to foam roll? Well, you taught me how to foam roll, so. Well, that's not going to be a very good story, then. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so what's, let's, let's talk about the most common thing that we see with foam rolling. What do you... What do you see when you're in the gym or on um, YouTube, wherever you are? Particularly with our teenagers, they're just kind of sitting on the floor, gently rolling back and forth while they're looking at their phones. Yeah. And not a whole lot of effort going into it and kind of going over the same spot over and over again. Yeah, I think definitely kind of like a quick back and forth, move mm -hmm. on. You know, if, if anybody rolls on their IT band on the side of their thigh, they may say, Ooh, that kind of hurts. And then just mm -hmm. kind of roll it two or three times and then move on. Right. Um, a couple things wrong with that. Number one, <laughs> um, it's called a foam roll, but you really aren't going to roll if that makes sense. So you're going to kind of move it, move, move the, the roller up and down on your leg but you're actually searching for where it hurts. So the answer to the question, is it okay to hurt? The answer is, well, no, that means that the tissue is unhealthy. So we don't want it to hurt. But if you do find pain, then we want you to right. focus on the spot that hurts. So it's a little bit counterintuitive. I know we get people all the time and say, it hurts. It I don't hurts. want to do it. Is that okay? I wasn't sure what to do. Um, so I think, yes, it's okay that it hurts. No, we don't want it to hurt long term, but that gives you some insight into an area that you really should be addressing, um, you know, from a corrective standpoint. So the, the two things, and we'll put some videos in the resources here, that kind of the two options when you're rolling, you, you find a spot that's uncomfortable. Number one, you're going to sit on it and kind of, or lean into it, whatever body part you're rolling, and just kind of stay where it hurts the most. And it, hopefully in 20 to 30 seconds, it'll kind of ease up and let off. Mm -hmm. um, if that happens, then you'll know it was just a, basically a trigger point, um, and that would be a good thing. Right. Uh, how have, how does a trigger point when you roll? How, what does it feel like? Uh, real sh sharp, kind of a smaller, isolated area, kind mm -hmm. of like you're getting poked with something. And have you ever had the experience where it kind of radiates down when mm -hmm. you hit the spot? Yeah. So that's a normal feeling. And what about um, whenever you rolled and then it kind of radiates? How does it, does it kind of go away? Does it start to centralize back to the spot where yeah, the ball kinda, or the it, roller is? When you first hit it, it sort of spreads out and then you sit on it or, you know, you stay on that spot for a little bit. And as it releases, then you feel it kind of going back in, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Totally. Yeah. 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 That's kind of what I experienced too. It'll be if you hit a spot, you may actually feel it like twitching or pulsing a little bit. 
Um, but if, so if you feel it twitching or pulsing or it's um, like radiating, those are good signs. It right. means that um, it kind of gets you're getting rid of it worse before it gets better. Definitely, yeah. So, so when it gets bad, you wait for it to get worse, and then hopefully it'll start backing off. Exactly. Yep. And then the the other option is then what we call tack and strip. So um, oh, this this takes some guts. Yeah. This this takes. <laughs> you might need a piece of leather to bite into. Uh, but basically, you find a spot that's uncomfortable. So let's say if you're watching on YouTube, let's say it's kind of like the back of my shoulder. So if I have a ball here or the foam roller here, I'll find a spot and say, okay, that's the most sore. I'm going to hold it there. And then I'm going to move my arm to kind of get the muscle to strip out from underneath that pinned muscle. So I'm using the roller as my tool to pin the muscle and the restriction mm -hmm. down. And then I'm trying to strip it out from underneath it by moving my arm or my leg or you know, whatever muscle it is. You might end up saying some words when you do this but mostly four letters not but, that, not, but that's not many okay are longer than four letters yeah, yeah. that's okay because it, it is not comfortable but it's necessary because if you if you leave it and you don't attend to it what happens well then so you go from latent trigger points which are the ones that you don't know you're there until you roll on them and then that you go holy crap that hurts <laughs> Um, to basically active trigger points, which start can cause some, you know, muscle pain. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you do have those latent trigger points there, they actually um, decrease the activation potential of that muscle. So you can start to have altered movement patterns. Uh, if it's not a trigger point, but more of a fascial restriction. So again, if you're watching on YouTube, if you can see my sleeve here, if I raise my arm up, my sleeve should slide down nice and easy. Um, that's think of that as your arm as your fascia or sorry, arm is your muscle and the sleeve is your fascia, which is kind of a covering around that. And then so what should happen is they should glide nice and smoothly on mm -hmm. each other up and down. Um, if you're not taking care of the tissue, a lot of repetitive use, um, just as we age in general, we become a bit less elastic. Sometimes I always use the analogy, it's kind of like getting duct tape between the two um, the, the two layers. And you go to raise your arm and it, the, you know, the sleeve is stuck to the arm so you can't move. So if you just continue trying to stretch the arm, which unfortunately happens in a lot of cases of people being tight, is we just stretch, stretch, stretch. But in the real, real reality, it's it, the tissue and the fascia are just locked together. And if you can just kind of rip the duct tape off, arm goes back moving directly the way that it should. That's kind of what it feels like, ripping duct tape off. It's not the most comfortable thing in the world. I, I, will, I will agree with that. <laughs> but if you don't fix it, you will have much more uncomfortable things coming towards you. Right. Yes. So. so if you have an area where it's uncomfortable, usually the first two weeks suck. Um, but then as, as you get better, mm -hmm. you start finding less and less areas. It kind of centralizes. And then the goal is I always, I not kind of use the analogy. It's like getting your, your oil changed. It's basically, you're just kind of down a daily basis. You're rolling, checking in with your, you know, with your body, see how it feels. If it's mm -hmm. no good, then you at least you found it, you identify it and get rid of it early. Um, don't let stuff build up that turn into these soft tissue musculoskeletal issues that are so easily preventable. Right. It's definitely a case that if you ignore it, it's, it's not going to get better by itself. It's just right. going to progress. Yeah. And for you golfers or other sport um, enthusiasts out there, they actually done a couple interesting studies where they, um, in golf, they did it where they had one group who did not roll. All they did was just your general static stretching mm -hmm. um, before they hit golf balls. Another group did rolling and a little bit of a dynamic warm-up, and the group that rolled saw a 5% increase in their power as opposed to stretching, which actually got worse. Wow. Um, so, so there actually is a bit of a performance element to it as well. We could think about it. You're getting rid of trigger points. You're improving the relationship mm -hmm. between those two layers. Those tissues are going to be able to contract harder. They're going to be able to move more smoothly against less resistance. You're going to increase your power and performance output. So um, there are definitely performance benefits to it as, as well as uh, injury prevention Right. And then well. for the person who's not an athlete, you just feel better if you can move better. Uh, particularly as we get older, things start getting tight and not moving as well. And A little bit more like beef jerky instead yeah. of filet mignon. So yeah. a few minutes with uh, you know foam rolling every day can kind of minimize that for you. Right. And I think, yeah, so I think and it's as you, people get better at foam rolling, it doesn't hurt, right? Mm -hmm. So they're like, oh, it doesn't hurt anymore. I don't need to do it. No. Once you graduate from the foam roll, grab a lacrosse ball or a softball, mm -hmm. and the fun starts all <laughs> over again. Because <laughs> it finds new spots. Exactly. So I think that's the big thing. Your foam roll is like your low-level entry mm -hmm. point. Um, use it correctly. Don't just roll up and down. 
uh, find a spot, pin it, and move through it. Or, you know, if you have trigger points, just sit on it and let it twitch out. But then after that starts to ease up, then you need to move to probably a, a softball or a lacrosse ball, something with a little bit smaller surface area that can get into the nooks and crannies of your hips and your shoulders and, and the different parts of your legs and arms and, uh, you know, just body in general. Mm-hmm. Um, that's going to allow you to really get a much more clear picture of how healthy your tissue is. When I travel, I bring a softball and a lacrosse ball. And after sitting on the plane and traveling, it's it's great to work out all those tight spots. And I tell you, when I went to Disney World with, with my kids, I forgot to take my lacrosse ball and softball out of my backpack that we had put all their food and mm-hmm. everything in. So, of course, you get there and the guy puts it on the table and he's dumping it out <laughs> and he pulls out the softball <laughs> and lacrosse ball. And he goes, he kind of looks at me like, the heck's wrong with you, dude? <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, I, to my stupid humor, say, Oh, just in case I saw Mickey Mouse, I wanted to get his attention. I was just going to hit him in the head. I said, sir, you can't throw this off. Sorry, sorry. Just put him back in. Disney was not amused. No, they were not no, amused. No. But uh, don't mess with there Mickey. You go. My quali- my humor quality is not very good. So, um, but yes, and I, I think the same thing. I, we tell all of our golfers, don't ever leave home without it. It should mm-hmm. be the first thing in your bag. It's a great recovery tool. Um, if you're sitting at a desk, bring put one at work. You can go over to a wall and just roll on your sh- you know, around the muscles mm-hmm. on your shoulder blades, your neck, kind of loosen that up if you're sitting at a computer all day. Um, so lots of great opportunities um, because they are so small. You can pretty much bring them wherever you want. Um, a little it might be a little weird in the office to get on the ground and start rolling your glutes out, but well, you know, um, if you got an office, by all <laughs> so, means, go ahead. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Another reason to strive for that promotion in the corner, right? o- the corner office. Corner office. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, we'll put some videos in this uh, for you um, in terms of, you know, what is foam rolling, why you want to be doing it, the difference between tack and strip and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, trying to get trigger points out. Um, definitely be sure to check out our Instagram. Uh, it was, yeah. I think it was back in it was January of 2019. I think somewhere in that yeah. range, there's mid, a video of me January. kind of standing up and kicking a foam roller yeah. <laughs> kind of talks about it. Um so, yeah, and there's obviously there's information on our blog as well at powerfulsuccess.com. So, uh, we'll put all those resources in there for you. I think the gist of it is stop foam rolling and mm-hmm. start being targeted in how you use your foam roll to get rid of trigger points um, and or to do some tack and strip to restore proper length relationships between your fascia and your muscle. And don't avoid the pain. You find it, get rid of it. Correct. Yeah, yeah, definitely get rid of it. Now, if you do have like nervy pain shooting somewhere or the other, that's, you know, consult your your uh, local healthcare yes. practitioner. Maybe if you're in a gym, maybe they have a physical therapist on site. If, even if you want to start with the, the strength coach there, um, they probably can give you some insight uh, if they're as good as, uh, you know, as I'm going to, I'm going to brag on Alex yes. a little bit. She's pretty good that we have here at Park Success. We're lucky. Um, but yeah, if you have a really good strength coach, there's no reason why they can't talk you through what's good and bad uh, as well. Too. And when you've reached the point that foam rolling is not going to fix whatever is going on, that maybe you need to see a physical yeah, they therapist. You need to be elevated to go see a physical therapist or something beyond what you could fix on your mm-hmm. own. So uh, but that's pretty much it. Hopefully yeah. you got to wherever you are going. Uh, I hope this week it wouldn't have been a long drive, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, in that case, just uh, turn on another episode. Right. Uh, so, Hopefully you have a great rest of the week. Uh, If it's the beginning of the week, hopefully you have a good week coming up. Uh, We've enjoyed hanging out with you today, and we are excited for our next episode, which we can't tell you what it is. You'll just have to tune in next week. It's always a mystery. It's always a mystery. We don't even really. I mean, we may not even really know what next week is. Yeah, well, sometimes we change our mind at the last minute. So if you have ideas of things that you would like for us to discuss, leave us a comment, and maybe that will be next week. Might be. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us, and we'll uh, we'll see you next time. Bye bye.